Okay. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining the Great Arising. We're going to talk about the mountains in our way that's separating us from the thing, the very thing that we need um, to move forward. Um, I believe the biggest mountain is ourselves. Um, not because God made it that way, but because we're in our own way. And so let me just talk about that for a little bit. One time I was speaking with a friend uh, about mountains and how we remove those mountains is speaking to the mountain. This is what Jesus taught us, right? Right after he uh, he cursed the fig, fig tree, he tells like he gave his, his, uh, his disciples an example of how words work. He's literally helping them to understand. He's giving them a, a demonstration on how the spirit works, how the spirit works and affects all of creation, uh, physical things. And he gave them this demonstration. And then right after that, he says, if you have faith like a mustard seed, you would be able to tell that mountain to go throw itself in the sea and it would obey you. Now, he wasn't talking about spiritual mountains there. He was literally talking about a mountain. He was like saying, see that mountain right there. But this is the thing. If we did have faith for removing that mountain as the size of a, a mustard seed, we'd be able to do that, a physical mountain. But the issue is we don't really have the faith to remove a physical mountain, at least not anyone so far in the past 2000 years. <laughs> but you do have faith like a mustard seed for other things. And the Lord wants you to exercise that faith for the assignment that he has given you. You know, one of the, the things that matters most in your life is what is your assignment because whatever your assignment is is what he's given you dominion over what he's given you authority over he doesn't give you authority over people he gives you authority over your assignment and so you can imagine the spiritual mountains that are in front of you that are blocking you from your assignment and so many people have said you know what it's just kind of silly speaking at your mountain. Sure. Right. That's, you know, it's kind of like, uh, uh, what is, what is the term, the old charismatic term, name it and claim it. And, you know, I just don't like that. And, you know, and I, I'm just like looking at them going, you are actually speaking to your mountain, you know, like they'll say things like, I'll never get out of debt. I'll always be poor. I'll always be in, you know, it's always like this. This is the, and I'm just like, you are speaking to your mountain and you're making your mountain grow bigger and bigger every day that you talk like that. Every day you have an attitude like that. Your mountain is bloating. It's getting bigger. It's getting taller. What's happening is it's making it seem more impossible to you. Your assignment is looking farther away and it's looking like it's more impossible for you. And there's more separation between you and your um, desire coming to uh, fulfillment. And this is a thing. God said that you be full of joy when your desires are seen, are demonstrated, are realized. He said you would be full of joy. And this word full is overflowing, exploding. God wants you to be exploding in joy. He doesn't want you to be sitting in your house waiting for something to happen and, and want, you know, just sad. And, you know, you're not supposed to be this sad, poor disciple that's getting martyred. You're not supposed to be a martyr. <laughs> My friends, maybe some of you are, I don't think most of you on this call are called to martyrdom. If you are, bless you. But this is the thing, the Lord wants you to demonstrate his limitless power, his limitless love, and uh, through your works, through what you do, through the mountains you take down, through every blockage that you remove in your life, he wants you to demonstrate his love and his power and his life and his blood flowing through his life force. Speaking of life force, I got to show you something really fast. Just reminded me I was doing a uh, project this weekend. It's a teaser for our, um, for our uh, movie that we're going to produce this spring. And um, why can't I show it to you? Maybe I'll show it to you later. Hold on just a minute. Give me just a second. Okay. I promise this is going to work. Um, 
Let's see. I always have this issue, you guys. For those of you who aren't on here very often, um, that is it. Wait a minute, I want to stop share for just a second. Um, I made this image for our movie. And this is what I want you to pray with me about because there are mountains in front of us. Diane is producing this. I'm going to direct it. There's mountains and we want them removed. So will you join me in praying for this uh, project? It is a project straight from the heart of God. I can't tell you about too much of it about it right now, but later when you see the teaser, you might get a little glimpse of what we're producing. But this life force is the force of God. And he wants to flow through your life. He wants to be a demonstration to the world of his goodness and his grace and his mercy. Amen. Okay, let's get back to what I wanted to talk to you about. First of all, I want you to remember that your nature, your true nature is unlimited. That is your true nature. It is unlimited. It's eternal. And the only limits you have are the limits you place on yourself. The ones that you accept. And, and, and sadly, we accidentally accept limitations that we're unaware of. You know, we're like walking along and we say things like, you know, that, you know, you're killing me. <laughs> no, no, no. You don't want to say things like that to anyone. <laughs> you need to say instead things like you are blessing me. Even those annoying people say they're blessing me because this is the thing. You are unlimited. They may not be aware of their unlimited power in Christ, but you are, and you speak differently. And every time you speak in alignment with your assignment, you are removing mountains that are separating you and your answer, you and other people. They might be annoying, but you need them. <laughs> and if you remove a mountain between you that is separating you and them, what happens is you empower them to bring you what you need, what God wants to, God wants to bless you through every person on this planet, because we are all a part of the body of Christ. Sue and I were talking about this before we got on the call today. And we were just saying, isn't she beautiful? Isn't she this? Isn't she that? You know, and Sue was like, yeah, but it's like every person is like that. When the light of Christ shines on them, they seem so beautiful. And I was just like, you're right. Like, it's amazing how God set up the body of Christ to work together, to be completely entwined and working with one another and bringing the blessings that we're looking for and that we need. And this is the thing, an annoying person or an annoying personality can really trip you up and keep you from getting that blessing that God sent that person to give you. And this is why uh, Paul says, be careful. You could be entertaining angels, you know, be careful how you speak and stuff, because it could be an angel you're entertaining and angels are always coming to minister to you. They always are doing God's will for your assignment and for you. And you could be blocking the angels. Maybe sometimes the angels can't even find you because there's a mountain between you and them. Oh, called attitude, <laughs> called, you know, judgment or whatever, you know, but we could, we could, uh, by accident be bloating, uh, making our mountains bigger and taller. And we don't even realize, and it feels like we're on this treadmill that is going nowhere and we're wasting all of our energy to get over the mountain when all we need to do is remove it with a word a word from heaven, a word from your heart, a word from your passion, the passion, the compassion in your heart, instead of your brain, instead of a memorized verse, those is, those are necessary. Yes. But it needs to come from your heart, from a place of feeling. We have studied this the last few weeks about the, the importance of feeling the feeling feelings come from your heart. I'm not talking about emotions. You know what I'm talking about. If you're if you're questioning this, just just think of the last time you were at a party and someone walked in the room that you just love and that is so kind and gentle and loving and bright in everything that they do. The whole room seems brighter. 
You have a feeling when that person walks in the room. You also have a feeling when a very confident person walks in the room. If Queen Elizabeth were still alive and she came walking in the room, you would be like, whoa, honor. You would feel honor. She carries it. She carries it. I don't think so. Yeah. Um, she carries a honor because of her position, right? And so um, you may not like her, <laughs> um, but she is a person in a place of position and you feel it, you feel it in the room. And I felt like that when I met President Trump, you may not like him, but when he walked in the room, I could feel the anointing on his life. You feel things like that, right? You can feel when a negative person walks in the room and, and you know, it's your spirit. It's your place of understanding. It's your place where God has made you um, able to discern between good and evil. Your spirit knows, right? But we say things out of, we say things out of uh, 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 just habit, you know, just things that the world says, you know, whether, you know, it's kind of like, you're killing me. We say those things and we don't even, even realize what we're saying, you know? So these are, these are the mountains that could be in your way that you are unaware of that you can remove right now. You can, you can walk in a powerful connection with the people that you need for this assignment that God has a place before you, you can make that connection today by one little thing, removing something from your attitude or the way you talk. Okay, let's move on. I wanted to get into a little bit today about understanding the importance of understanding. Do you know that um, anyone who, okay, wait a minute. I just want to uh, talk about the uh, parable of the seed for a second. You know, when Jesus taught the parable of the seed, so Matthew talks about it and Mark talks about it, but Mark doesn't mention a very important thing. You know, the verse where it says that, um, um, you know, the, the devil can, can snatch away the seed. You know, this verse, I, I have it right here in Matthew 13, 19, anyone who hears the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, the devil comes and steals the seed. Mark did not include and understandeth it not. Okay, I love all the disciples. I'm glad we have all of them, but they didn't all record everything Jesus said. They all had their own like view. It was, it was, it's just amazing how the Bible just all works together. But Matthew recorded it. Notice that he comes to seal the, steal the seed of the one who doesn't understand it. So understanding, he can only steal it from you if you don't understand. So the, the seed is given to every person. It is every person. God is not, um, he's not prejudiced. He doesn't withhold from anyone. He, he, Let's the, the kingdom seeds just fall on every person. Okay. And it's the understanding of it that allows the devil to steal or not. You know, the, the Bible also says the devil's looking for someone uh, who he may destroy, right? If there are those that the devil may destroy, then there are those that the devil may not destroy. I'm just going to proclaim over every one of you watching this that you are one of those. You may not be destroyed, okay? <laughs> Let's just decide. We are those. We may not be destroyed. But the last few weeks, we've been talking about feelings and their their hurts, their, their vibration, their level of frequency, right? And why this is so important, because when you have a bad feeling in your heart, there is, it's telling you something, you are walking in a limited view of who you are, who you really are, because who you really are is in Christ. If you're in Christ and he's in you, you can do whatever Jesus can do. You can do what he said more than what he did when he was here right? Okay. So if you have a proper view of yourself and an understanding of who you are, then the devil cannot steal the seeds of the kingdom, the word of the kingdom of God from you. 
those seeds will grow into tall trees and they will become a strength for you to do the assignment that is on your life. Okay, now, um, so let's just reiterate that. If you understand things and understand how they work, you will most likely the devil will not be able to steal from you. So this is why understanding, I feel that God has opened the eyes or opened the ability of all these scientists that are coming out now about feelings having different frequency levels and the, the heart brain coherency. If you haven't heard about that, please go watch our video on heart brain coherency. It is so important that your heart is in charge, not your brain. Go back and watch that. But if you understand how things work, like the centurion soldier, we talked about that last week, remember? And what about the other person that Jesus said had faith like no one else in Israel? The woman who comes and begs him to uh, deliver her daughter. And he says, well, I have come to the people of Israel, not to the dogs. <laughs> no, I don't believe he called her a dog. You know what I think he was doing? He was calling her what all of his disciples were calling her in their brains. They were thinking, oh, what's this dog doing here? They called those people dogs. They were not the chosen one. And so Jesus was just like kind of making it like, oh yeah, you know, you're, you're a dog. Right, you know, <laughs> he's like kind of probably winking at her, you know, but he, he has a purpose for all of this. And she understood that a dog, even a dog can take the crumbs from the master's table and just a crumb would work for her. Like a mustard seed, just a crumb from the master's table would work and her daughter would be delivered. She understood how faith worked. She understood. And then Jesus says, wow, I haven't seen anyone with faith like you. He marveled at her faith because she understood it. Same with the centurion soldier. So understanding how things work will empower you in ways that you cannot be defeated. You can be an unlimited, the unlimited person that you are right now, just by understanding things. The more you grow in understanding of faith, the more those seeds are being watered. You water the seeds with the word of God. The more you have the word of God in you, the more your body is being flooded with light. And the more you are operating from the spirit, from the heart, not the brain, from the heart, and you get results. You get results. You get what you ask for. You pray and you receive it because you understand it. And this is where we want to be friends. None of us have arrived, but we are arriving. We have left the door or the, uh, we have left the building. Praise God. Right. Okay. So, um, let's just review too, that faith is the substance of the unseen. So faith has substance. Faith isn't sitting at home waiting for God to move. That's not what faith is. You're not waiting on God. He's waiting on you. I can guarantee you that you are not waiting on him. He has given you everything that you need for your assignment. He's given you everything that you think you lack. He's not waiting. He is waiting on you. He's hoping you get it. He's hoping you tear down some mountains today. Friends, we're going to do that in just a minute. Um, a lot of people have knowledge of the word, but don't have enough understanding to put it into motion. So a lot of people, they have knowledge of the word of God, but they don't have enough understanding to actually put it into action. And that's what we want to do. Everyone has seeds, but they are in a desert climate. Hmm. A desert climate of the soul. Your soul needs watering, my friends. Maybe you have allowed your heart to go numb. You don't even have feelings. Everything is just done by, you know, memorization or performance. You know what? What, what I believe you need to do is to go out into nature. Because Romans 1 uh, verse 20 says, God's invisible attributes can clearly be seen 
and being understood, it can be understood by the things that are made. If you go out into nature, my friends, you will understand more clearly the one who created it. You're going to get close to his heart. You're going to hear him. Just walking in the grass and going out into nature will give you so much more understanding than you think. This is why you need to get out there. Um, the the um, Let's see, wait a minute. Even, okay, it says, understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and transcendence. You will understand his eternal power and transcendence. You'll understand how God is in you, working in you. You'll understand it more just by the things that are created. And this is the thing, all these scientists that now know how things are working, they are seeing in the creation how it's working. And you, th there's all this understanding available for you so that you won't, you know, when you, when you experience that separatedness from God, you won't tolerate it anymore. You will instead begin to proclaim, no, I am not separated from God. He is in me. You know, we don't, if, if you think of him out there, then you will pray to him like he is far away. Like he's on his throne in heaven somewhere. You need to find him right here. He's in you. He's on the throne of your heart. He took over the throne of your heart when you gave your life to him. You already died in Christ and he's sitting on the throne. If you find him there, you will see mountains flattened. You got it. You need to find him right here in your heart. That's where he is. The thing is, is we've silenced our heart and we've given our brain first place our habits and the thoughts that we have from before we were saved. We go to that instead of the heart. And what's happened is our heart has been squelched and it you can't even feel anymore. Your, your heart is numb. Hmm. Yeah. So if you can find him in you, every mountain is coming down. That is the secret. That's that's the understanding we need right now, uh, more than anything. Uh, let's go to um, what verse? I have so many verses here. You know, the word understand in the Hebrew is really important for you to just do a word study on understand. Um, in the Hebrew, it means to separate mentally, uh, attend, consider, be cunning, uh, another meaning is feel, regard, perceive, have intelligence. You know, have you ever met someone who's so smart and yet they're so dumb? You know, <laughs> have you ever met someone like that? You're like, wow, you have a lot of information in your brain, but yet you're so dumb. Like you would never say that to them, but <laughs> I know we've all probably thought it before, right? <laughs> but this is the thing, like, it's not about the information in your brain. You don't need more information in your brain. You don't need more thoughts. You need to let your heart do the talking. And so many people have not let their heart do the talking for so many years. They don't even know that they have one. They don't know that their heart is more intelligent than their, their brain. Remember your brain is a processor. We love our brains. They're great, but they're just processors. You were supposed to get all of your information from the throne room of God, the throne room of God right here. Don't think of the throne room of God far away because it's not, it's in you. The kingdom of God is within you. He's on the throne of your heart. He's right there. You and him are one. You're one right now. Not when you get to heaven one day, right now you're one. <laughs> if you get a glimpse, if you get this, my friends, you're going to be walking in the dominion power that you were meant to walk in dominion over your assignment. You're going to, you're going to be asking for things and getting them like the next day or the next hour. It's going to happen so much quicker. The more you're aware, the more you'll see this happening. And this is where understanding comes in being aware of how this is all working. 
And so that you can activate your faith and you can make it work. Okay. Faith works. It's not just, you know, like I said before, you're not sitting at home waiting for God to act. That's not faith. That's not faith at all. <laughs> faith is you doing something, you taking dominion, you making the connections. Why? Because that person that's looking for you to give you the money that you need for your assignment, they're looking for you too. <laughs> and if you walk in the confidence of that, you will meet. But before that, there's a mountain between you. I said earlier that your angels can't find you because the mountain's too big. <laughs> Take down the mountain, my friend. Come on, we don't want to, we don't want to hide behind these mountains called limited thinking. You know, we limit ourselves, but we ourselves are in Christ. We are in him. If we are really in him, my friends, we can say, and if we're aware of it, and if we know it and we understand it, we can say to that mountain with boldness, get out of my way already. Okay. Okay. Let's, I mean, there's so many verses on understanding, knowing, um, things and wow, there's so much, but those mountains come down the more you understand and the more, okay. I, I need to, I need to review a little bit, the heart issue, the feeling when you pray prayers of feeling, when you feel them, you're praying from the heart, from the spirit, when you're praying from passion, compassion, you're praying from the spirit, not from, oh yeah, this is what I need. So I'm just going to pray this right now in Jesus name. And you, you tag on that, you tag that on, on the end of every prayer. That's not what it means to pray in Jesus name. It's not the tag at the end of your prayer to pray in Jesus name is to pray in his nature Every Jewish person who doesn't, you know, well, let's just say mess Messianic Jew, because they know Jesus. Every Jewish person, Messianic Jew, would tell you that's what that means, to pray in his nature. How can you pray in his nature? Because you're in him. <laughs> you are in him. And he's in you. You know what I do every day in the morning? I wake up and I say, I am my beloved, so my beloved is mine. And then I'll say things like, I love my pillow. I love my, my bed. I love that I have a warm bed to sleep in. I wake up in, in the glory of God because I go there first. That's the first thing I do before I get out of bed. And it, it, it just, it basically starts my day off on the right foot. And I don't do it for that. I've just made it a habit now. I'm going to acknowledge that Jesus is right here. He's right here. And I am my beloved's and he is mine. And you know what that means? He is walking with me and in me everywhere I go today. So today is going to be a successful day. <laughs> I'm going to have a successful day in Jesus. And this is the thing, friends, you don't want to become a spiritual chameleon. This is a warning. Do not become a spiritual chameleon where you go to a party and you kind of take on the spiritual atmosphere of the party or you take on the spiritual atmosphere of the person you're talking to. Don't do it. D just resist that. You were given Jesus so that you could shift the atmosphere, not so you could just fit in to any spiritual atmosphere. You are designed to bring the kingdom of heaven into every meeting, every place you go, ev uh, literally every place you go. If you go into it aware that you're taking Jesus in there and you two are one and you're going in the power of the kingdom of heaven, that meeting is going to change. You're taking the power of God into the meeting with you. <laughs> Come on. And those people, if they don't respond, they're deaf, dumb, and blind. <laughs> we got to pray for them. We got to wake them up. But this is the thing. Most people will see a demonstration of the kingdom when it is displayed. 
They see it. Even pagans can see it. Pagans can see gentleness. They can see kindness. They can see love. They can see excitement. They can see anointing. Even pagans can see it. <laughs> Come on. It is so amazing to operate like this. You know, um, I'm noticing that my prayers are getting answered so quick right now. And I'm so thankful for that. I, I cannot take credit for it. It is Jesus in me for sure, teaching me and showing me these things and helping me to understand how things work. It is definite. He is the source of all that I talk about, um, all that I think and know. If it's good, it's from him. <laughs> Anything that I do or say that isn't like, you know, according to the fruit of the spirit is just of some habit I had from before I was a Christian or some wrong thinking. So excuse me, but, <laughs> but I've noticed that I will just have a desire in my heart. I used to say, oh, I would like to do that. And I would pray for it. Okay. In Jesus name. Oh yeah. I would like to have that. Da -da -da -da. And I would just like make this list for God bring all of your requests to God, right? That's what the Bible says. And I would just make my requests known to God and in Jesus name. Okay. Okay. I never see them. I never see the result of my prayers, but I have it. I have since then included, not included, but allowed my heart to take charge. And, and now when I pray, it's through feeling it's not through it's not through information or it's not from the brain. <laughs> okay. It's coming from the heart. I had a real desire to go down to orange County for Christmas to see my kids for Christmas. And it's always a challenge to go down there because at Christmas time, because all the hotels are booked and my kids have smaller homes. They don't have a big home. Like we used to have down there. They have smaller homes. And you know, when you have kids, it's like, you know, uh, yeah, we would sleep on the couch, but <laughs> you know, you, you get it. You probably don't want to, but, um, I was just, I was just like talking with the Lord one day. I was like, wow, Lord, I would love to go down to orange County and see my kids. That would be so fun. And, you know, and I was just thinking about all the ways it would be so full of joy and so fun. Right. And I, I got the feeling of the fun of doing that, you know, and I was just having this casual conversation with Jesus. That would be so fun to do that. And do you know what? The next day or two later, I get a text, a random text message from a client of mine that I photographed seven years ago. I get this text saying, Annette, would you and your husband like to stay at the Valencia? I can't remember what it's called, the Valencia. Um, I don't know, but it's this big, huge place in uh, Rancho Santa Fe. And I was like, are you joking right now? Rancho Santa Fe is my favorite place in that area. It is like Italy away from it. It's Italy, basically Italy. Okay. And I photographed Tiger Woods there and Phil Mickelson and uh, John Daly, Ernie Els, a whole bunch of the PGA guys, but I was more uh, photographing. I was assigned to Tiger Woods. And that's a whole story in itself, how I got that job, but I did it three years in a row. And so every year I'd go back to this place and I would go, wow, I would love to stay in this place. It's like, you know, Phil Mickelson actually work, uh, lives there. He has a home there. And I just used to dream about it when I would photograph them, you know, and she goes, yeah, we have a, a room there. It's like $900 a month, but closer to Christmas, it's about $2,000, $2,500 a, a night to stay there. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm going totally worth it, you know, because <laughs> that's how beautiful it is. You know, you have each, each place has their own hot tub, their own outdoor fireplace, indoor fireplace, you know, it's amazing. And she just goes, yeah, we'd, we'd like to gift it to you and your husband for a night stay. <laughs> And I'm going, oh my goodness, not only do I get to see my kids at Christmas time, but I have like the best place in all of Orange County <laughs> to stay. Anyways, come on. Like the Lord is so good, but this is what happens when we involve our heart into things and, 
And we just like, we're praying in Jesus name. We're praying in his character, in his nature. We're praying. We're, we're talking to him. Like he's right here talking to us. We're not praying to him. Like he's way out there. No, he's right here. And he, he, he has the desire for me to see my kids at Christmas time. Imagine. Okay. I want to tell you this other really cool um, example of how you can do this for yourself. Okay. So uh, there's this one person who um, I was at this event where my friend Rex was, and he was uh, saying, what do you desire? You know, just, just what do you desire? She goes, well, I actually need money to be honest with you. I just need more money. And he goes, well, how much do you need a month? And she goes, um, gosh, 10,000 would be nice if I could make $10,000 a month and it would pay all this. And, you know, I could be generous and stuff. And he goes, how about if we ask the Lord for 10,000 a day? <laughs> and she goes, wow, that would be, a, that would be, woo. And she started feeling the joy of what it would be like to make 10,000 a day. Can you imagine she could buy her kids a house? She could buy herself and her husband a house. She could be so generous, but it's because he went way out of her, like what she was thinking and she felt the feeling of it. She was able to go, whoa, that would be so cool. Yeah, she started laughing. She was, and he goes, think about how thankful you would be, how joyful you would be if you had 10,000 a day. And she just laughed. And this is how he taught, taught her how to pray, how to pray from the feelings of your heart. Because a lot of us just go, okay, we're just, we're just praying for the bare minimum. Okay, God, I need $10,000 this month in Jesus name. Amen. <laughs> no. Okay. So that's how you activate your heart. Get yourself thinking way above and beyond. And I know some of you are going, but I've done that. But then you've like, the mountain remains. How are you speaking to your mountain? Are you praying in joy and then blah, 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 blah. Speaking to my mountain, making it grow. <laughs> A bad attitude, you know, ugly words coming out, ugly thoughts thinking about other people, thinking about how that person's annoying and the world is going to hell in a handbasket and da 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 Okay, okay, I hope I helped you a little bit today. Um, my friends, the best thing you can do is get understanding how this works, how it works, because if you can see it, you can do it. You know, um, I just want to give you one more example and then we'll go off um, uh, the record. Um, remember, remember the Shulamite bride? She was her own mountain. She wanted intimacy with the king, but she saw herself as dirty, as little, as limited. She had this sorry, small, limited, ugly ego <laughs> that's that's what the ego is it's limited it doesn't see things the way god sees it you got to get your ego out of the way and see the way god sees and you know what once she started seeing herself the way the king saw her king jesus when she started agreeing with him you're right i'm beautiful you're right i have you I don't have to run and find you. I have you right here with me. She starts, this is how she ends chapter seven. She says, now I know that I am my, I am for my beloved and all his desires are fulfilled in me. Come away. She's telling him now, come away, my lover. <laughs> like he was saying that to her, just come away with me. But she's now saying to King Jesus, well, Solomon, if you want to be literal about it, come away, my lover, come with me to the faraway fields. We will run away together to the forgotten places and show them redeeming love. Look at her confidence, my friends. She just grew in her confidence over seven chapters of the king telling her who she is. 
oh, if you would understand who you are, you would, the mountain would flatten right now today if you understood who you were. If you understood who Jesus is and how close he is to you, you would be able to say to any mountain, get out of my way. And you would have what you need right now. And not tomorrow, right now. Because the thing is, is you need to understand that you already have everything that you need for life and godliness. It's already been given to you. It's like you're worthy right now. You're not becoming worthy. You are worthy now. You didn't earn it, work for it, or deserve it. God made you worthy to receive what you need for your calling. He made you worthy. You have no, you have no say in it. You can say I'm unworthy all day long. It's not true, <laughs> but it's making your mountain higher and higher and higher. It's a self-made mountain. My friends, go out today and just, 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 li just listen to Jesus in your heart saying, I made you worthy. I made you royalty. I made you have honor. I made you honorable to receive all of my blessings and all of your desires I gave you. Don't apologize for what you desire. You know, if you got $10,000 a day, you would be the most generous person on your block. You know it. You know you would go build an orphanage in Africa. You know it <laughs> because Jesus, Jesus has maybe put that desire in your heart. You're going to do the desires of your heart because he put him there and he's with you and in you and you're in him. So my friends, I pray for you today that you just have an understanding of that. And every mountain is flattened and your words carry power and spirit and life. And they come from your heart and you see results uh, in your life. And the world sees the demonstration of the kingdom of God coming from you. Amen. Okay. I love you. I hope you have the best week ever until next week. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.